traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics and you're listening to the week ahead video for December 8th, 2019. Um, I want to welcome you guys to this week's video. It's going to be a busy week, and uh, but before I get started with everything that is going to be happening this next week, I have to mention that if you, if you haven't tried out Forex Analytics, you might as well do so right now because I was just looking at our homepage and I realized that our Cyber Monday sale is still valid um i don't think it's supposed to be that way so <laughs> you'll probably get taken down tomorrow uh it was supposed to be taken down uh, on friday i think our admin uh forgot to do that but that's okay hey for you guys if you want to take advantage of it do it right now because once uh that's gone then you'll have to just try it out for one dollar for 10 days so uh if it's still up there i'm not in control of this so if it's still up there might as well buy one month get one month free but once you do that um, make sure you download the mobile app so this way you have all of our analysis on your tablet or your smartphone you know you can get it in the and uh, the Apple Apple Store or the Google Play Store if you have an Android device um, so make sure you download the app okay uh, now that I went through that let's talk about this next week so we are getting really close and this is the data flash by the way this is you know your breaking news as it comes out uh this this uh to be announced that it, that information comes out this split second that it is released i'm just gonna move that out of the way uh i'm actually gonna spend less time on the app or the uh the the forex analytics uh uh platform today and the reason why is and you guys can get all this analysis here we've done all these updates um you know throughout the throughout the weekend but uh, I actually want to draw a little bit on the live charts today so I'm not going to spend a lot of time here um, but I'll talk about a couple of things but uh, like I said it's going to be a busy week where we're, we're we're wrapping up the the 2019 year thank God because it's just been uh, you know it's been very low volatility environment however I feel that this week volatility is probably going to pick up there's a few major events coming to a head uh, first and foremost will be, you know, the, the Brexit um, or, you know, more importantly, the UK vote. Uh, that's going to be this Thursday. We have the December 15th, uh, which will be next Saturday. Um, it's going to be the December or next Saturday or Sunday. Sorry, that's the 15th. Um, the tariffs that are supposed to go and play. Oh, it's uh, the 15th, um, which is Sunday. We have those tariffs that are supposed to be be implemented but they're probably going to be put on hold but the market's going to be trying to sniff that out this week as China the in the US are, are still negotiating then we have the the uh, NAFTA or USMCA negotiations or uh, or passage of that that's possibly going to happen this week so there's a lot of things trying to get wrapped up this week for year-end and so the market's going to be on pins and needles the the whole FX market is so because of those events uh, we're probably going to see an uptick in volatility so just be aware of that that's why i'm going to do a little bit of a uh, live um, analysis here uh, versus uh, on the platform because i can't draw on the platform uh, but i can here so uh, let's talk about and, and then on top of all this we have a couple central banks that are meeting we have the uh, european central bank the the, the fed um, and they, remember the ecb is christine lagarde's first meeting so that'll be interesting and then we have the swiss national bank so um and, and and by the way from all the central banks we're not expecting any fireworks per se um but they they are meeting so it's it's important to note so first and for, foremost let's just start off with the euro uh I, I tweeted out a chart last week that the euro was um pushing a pretty key multi-year trend line and it was and uh we rejected it actually on Friday because of the the weak jobs report so um, you know there's or excuse me the strong jobs jobs report weakened the euro and strengthened the dollar um, the euro fell uh, came really close to its 618 retracement which comes in at uh, 11030 and interesting if you if you um, I'm gonna go back to the Forex analytics platform if you use the Elliott wave analysis uh, from Gregor Horvat he was looking at this um, before it happened and you can see his four hour chart he was looking for a rejects, rejection around 111 uh, 111 level back down um, to uh, 11050 and then a move back up so we're in this current wave right now 
uh, it, that he forecast that was back in uh, that was back on December third. So um, we we've basically done this move, and and you know based on his counts, you know he's looking for a move up here now for the euro to to break out. Uh, to break out to the upside, um, I would assume it'd have to be because of change in rhetoric with the with the ECB. I'm not so um, I'm not so inclined to to get super bullish down here, but his wave counts are showing that. However, while we're above, let's just call it the 110 level. I mean, this is all you know, pretty key support down here. You know, this is all big support zone. Um, but while we're above 110. I don't know if I'd be, you know, bearish, uh, so to speak. I mean, the euro looks like it's actually building a base. It's trying to build a base, you know, before a rally. What could push it over the edge, or what could push it higher above, like this trend line, and and above, like um, you know, what I what I consider as channel resistance here, which you can see the the uh, solid blue lines, and the 200-day moving average. What will push it above here is maybe you know a change. Uh, 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 of of rhetoric with the ECB on Thursday, or more importantly, maybe um, you know a majority of the t uh, a, a Tory or a UK election with the Tories taking the majority and no hung parliament, the pound will rally, obviously, and the euro will probably rally um, as well. You know, in that in that type of situation. So uh, just remember, the euro is going to be you know challenging some pretty key resistance anywhere above 111 and between 111 and 11150 if we should even get up there and dips back down towards 110 are probably going to be fairly well supported at least early on this week so that's something to think about now let's talk about the cable because you know this is a big deal obviously we have the UK elections on Thursday the polls are showing that Boris Johnson's you know party uh, has a majority and the risk of uh, a hung parliament I think is more realistic and if that's the case the pound could retrace but if the polls are correct and you know and 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 we get Boris Johnson uh, taking a majority then the pound could really really explode this the sterling here uh, or the cable, whatever you guys want to call it. But the 132 level or 131.70, this, this is a pretty big resistance because it's a 50% retracement. You can see from this April 2018 high to, this, to the lows here, it's a 50% retracement. We have 161% extension of this la or this consolidation. And then, you know, here we are testing this, you know, this big confluence. So a move above 132, and you can see that there's some... Uh, horizontal resistance right here okay a move above this 132 level would be really quite bullish in the cable or the sterling the 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 thing that we might get ahead of the weekend or the weekend um thursday excuse me is that we might get a little bit of consolidation here like we had previously we had this consolidation which was a very tight consolidation it was very shallow we might have something similar here where we might pull back you know to 130 50 or something before you know making a break this is such a big resistance technically that i think um that i think you know it rejecting it for you know the first time around makes sense so if we break above 132 on thursday night um i know i know those of us in the united states are going to be you know right in front of our computer uh waiting for the election results if you're in uh the uk or in Europe, you're going to be probably staying up late that night. It, it's it's a big deal, and uh, you know we're either going to get a massive rejection here, and we're going to get a, a heck of a pullback, or a breakout above 132 is going to take us to 136. I mean that's where the that's where the the target lies for this uh, this flag pattern. So I'm sure everybody's going to be everybody's going to be you know waiting to see what happens on. Thursday night. Okay, so that's 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 obviously something I wanted to point out. Um, now let's talk a little bit about you know the China U.S. trade negotiations. Um, <laughs> what can I say? You know the negotiations are ongoing. Uh, more than likely, we're going to see the tariffs 
um, that are supposed to be in, implemented next weekend probably going to be postponed. And if that's the case, we should see a tick up in risk. Uh, we should see, and what I would be following actually, I was going to take you into the Aussie dollar, which I, I'll come back to. If you look at the US dollar CNH, this is probably the currency pair that you have to watch. Um, and it's not something that's technical that, you know, I, I would be trading. It's more something that will help us as traders identify if it's risk on or risk off. If the, 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 the WAN or the Remimbi really starts to strengthen, that means we see a, a move lower in the US dollar CNH. That is telling us that, you know, that, the China US trade negotiations are going better or, you know, or going well. Um, so if we see a breakdown in the US dollar CNH, that means that, you know, stocks are probably rallying because um, the news is good, whatever, you know, the, 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 whether it's a postponement of tariffs or, or, you know, um, there is a deal on the table and it's going to be signed going into, you know, early next year, whatever the case may be. If for some reason though you 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 are you're looking at the U.S. dollar C and H and it starts to spike up, then that's telling us that the the China U.S. trade negotiations are breaking down. The tariffs are going into place. So I think um, you know rather than getting um, you know uh, uh, inundated with all the news and trying to read through it all. I think watching the U.S. dollar CNH is going to give you a, a, a really good indication of what the market is feeling or thinking. So just remember, a spike up in U.S. dollar CNH is bad for risk. That means stocks are coming down. How how the how the dollar and how the FX market will respond to that, I'm still not really clear on, except for a few things. Um, there's a couple things that I am clear on, which I'll, I'll go into here in one second. But just remember, if it's going up, that means that that uh, you know remember if it's going higher that means it's good for stocks okay it's good for the stock or uh, excuse me, bad for stocks <laughs> she's saying I don't, I'm, I, it's Sunday morning so just bear with me if it's going higher here that means it's bad for stocks and uh, bad for risk if it's going down that means it's it's good for risk it's good for stocks you know stocks are going higher and again you know looking at the FX response is going to be rather interesting because because I was just taking you over to the Aussie. The Aussie dollar, surprisingly, has not rallied. You know, we have had this massive move in equities. And, um, you know, here we are at, you know, all-time highs. And, you know, you can see on Friday, you know, big, strong um, uh, uh, jobs number. And stocks, you know, ripped up towards trend highs. And it still looks like we're going higher. But why hasn't, like, the Aussie yen rallied? You know, why hasn't the Aussie yen responded with a massive move higher? And why aren't we above the 200 day moving average? Maybe the Aussie is actually waiting for confirmation that the, you know, that the coast is clear between US and China, that the, the everybody's, you know, kind of, you know, come to some sort of agreement before it rallies. Maybe that's the case, or maybe this divergence between the Aussie N and, and, and the Aussie and the S&P is trying to tell us something. Well, we're not going to know, um, obviously, until it happens. But I will tell you this. If for some reason things break down between China and the U.S. And uh, um, some of the guys in my office uh, were talking about, you know, this, this strong jobs report. Maybe it's not so good for the China-U.S. trade deal because... You know, Trump might have a little bit more confidence and say, you know, we can we can we can negotiate harder because we've had this, you know, a, a really strong economy and we can take some hits to the downside if we need to. Well, if that's the case and let's say the situation before between China and the U.S. does not improve and it gets worse and the de December 15th tariffs do look like they're going to go into place, this Aussie yen is probably going to be a really good short because it hasn't rallied with risk. So that's something that, you know, I'm, I'm paying attention to as well. It's not just the CNH, but, you know, what's the FX response to what happens in a risk on or risk off environment. Um, so, you know, again, I'm, I'm just really keeping an eye on the Aussie and, and scratching my head wondering why hasn't it 
route. Why hasn't it gone up? It should have gone up. If you know, um, one of the better proxies to China and what's happening in that you know side of the world is the Australian currency, which is probably more sensitive to the you know Chinese developments than any other you know G10 currency. So let's you know pay pretty close attention to what's happening in the Aussie. One of the one of the other things I wanted to point out um, is you know the dollar yen. The dollar yen, you know, we we've we're back below the 200-day moving average, and this is another, you know, head scratcher that you're seeing the yen strengthen. Why? Why was? I mean, you know, I understand on, on uh, I understand that 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 it you know hasn't broken down, and maybe this is a good level to be buying the U.S. dollar, Japanese yen, if things are going to work out between China and the U.S. But even on Friday, we had the strong jobs report, and I don't know if you noticed, but the dollar yen went down. I mean, we're we're at you know this is channel support right here. We're well we're well below the 200-day moving average, and we haven't been able to you know muster up a rally, and we had a false breakout on this inverted head and shoulder pattern. What's up with that? You know, so again, um, everything that we read or that we see, it looks like we're moving towards a China, U.S positive resolution but the fx market does not seem so inclined to believe that the flip side to you know or the 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 other side of the coin to to that statement is the fx market has been very unresponsive as of late to anything so um that's that's another you know way to look at it as well maybe you know currencies are just basically sidelined until we get an all clear between Brexit, China, China, US trade deal and, 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 uh, you know, um, NAFTA or USMCA. Maybe that's, maybe that's the case. Um, so again, these are just things that I'm, you know, uh, kind of scratching my head. Now, one of the other asset classes that we should obviously keep an eye on is gold. Uh, gold has been, you know, holding up very well. I hear a lot of people that are very bearish on gold, but I don't understand why. Because technically, if you if you just look at it, you know, from a simple, pragmatic, technical analysis point of view, all right, we have this bull flag pattern, right? It's it's a very bullish pattern. We've have a very minimal pullback. When I say minimal, I mean look, this is a thirty eight percent retracement. Okay. Whoops. Let me go back over. Um, this is a 38% retracement. Yes, we're rejecting the 1500 level. That's the top of the, the the pennant. But what happens if we break through 1500? You know, if you look at relative strength on a daily basis, okay, relative strength we've we we've worked off all of the overbought conditions. We're now neutral. You know, it's it's, uh, it's it's registering you know mid 40s right now on RSI. If for some reason gold, if for some reason gold breaks out to the upside, RSI is going to break out to the upside. So, and then then that's gonna that's gonna confirm this upward move. This is only going to happen in a risk off type of environment. You know, what would what would constitute risk off? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll just name a couple of things that could, you know, there's, there's, you know, what could happen in a positive sense this week and what could happen in a negative sense. Um, well, positive, you get, you know, the UK elections, it's, it, you know, Boris Johnson, you know, declares victory and, you know, there's no hung parliament and, uh, and then we get a, you know, a, a the tariffs are paused uh, or on hold on for December 15th and it looks like we're going to get you know a signing of phase one deal going into you know the end of the year or you know beginning of next year and life is good you know stocks go higher uh, and the USMCA trade agreement um, you know it's is passed and 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 everything is good on a trade front but the the negatives are all three of those things could fall apart this week and if that happens, then gold's going to be probably one of those, one of those indications that shows us, you know, if, if it breaks above fifteen hundred. So, what I, what I'm looking for is just, you know, a, a breakout or a breakdown. You know, a, a break below this um, this fourteen fifty level. 
you know, I wouldn't get too excited about it until we get below the 200 day moving average. But I think that, you know, breakdown below here would, you know, signal that all is good in the world. But, you know, the flip side of that is, you know, we break above 1500 and, you know, it looks something like this. And um, that means things are falling apart at the seams as we go into uh, the year end. And remember, everybody's in front of the computer this week. This is the last real big week uh, ahead of the holiday, um, uh, ahead of the holidays where everybody's, you know, you know, really expecting um, some fireworks this week. Good fireworks or bad fireworks, however you, you know, however you're, you're viewing the market. But we're, you know, we're expecting some resolution on, on some of these key events. Uh, we're no, we're going to know Brexit for sure, or, uh, or, uh, or the UK elections for sure. Um, I'm, I assume by the weekend, uh, by Friday of next week, we're going to have a pretty good indication whether U.S. China negotiations are are at a standstill, or uh, you know, or or we're going to be moving forward and 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 redu and, and um, you know, um, holding off on the December fifteenth tariffs. So I think those are are the two big ones that are going to come you know, interview this week. So anyway, uh, it, it's going to be a busy week, guys. And this is not a week that you want to be uh, taking off if you can't. Uh, it might be kind of slow going beginning of the week. But, uh, you know, as, as the week picks up throughout, um, you know, uh, the week picks up uh, uh, steam going into midweek with all the central bank meetings, uh, you know, from Wednesday on, it's going to start getting pretty, pretty, uh, pretty volatile and things will probably be moving based on headlines and uh you know polls coming out so just just uh you know be aware uh and 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 you know keep your pride positions rather small and then uh look towards the end of the week for some bigger volatility so uh, but but guys if you want updates every single morning uh watch our face webinar it's free uh to, to log in and listen and um and you can log in and you know get my views in the morning I, I spend a good 25 30 minutes with you every morning um for free you know just kind of giving you my my thoughts about what's happening you know in the day ahead so make sure you listen in there and uh, also if you're watching this video and you're like man that's a great you know it's really helping me prepare for the week give us a thumbs up uh, if you're watching us on youtube um subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our interviews you don't miss um you know any of our our our, our, our you know our, our um analysis if you couldn't listen in live throughout the course of the week and um guys i'll i'll see you tomorrow morning on the face webinar my name is blake morrow with forex analytics i hope you have a great remainder of your sunday and i will see you tomorrow <laughs>